Okay, I'm going to uh, show you how I do angles. I've already showed you the first angle, and I've already run the second leg of the other angles. But I'm going to run this one again for you, just to show you that you run in the second coat of mud over your angle, how important it is to get it right. Now my mud is a little bit soupy right now. There again, I'm still using 90 minute mud, hot mud. Another reason we call it hot mud is, like I said before, it chemically hardens. But if you get a really fast mud, like 20 minute mud, and mix it all up, it'll actually get hot to the touch because it's hardening so fast. Anyways, so even if it's hot mud or regular mud, the technique is the same on doing these angles. Again, I'm using my 5 inch knife and I'll put it on and then I'll explain what I'm doing. Again, I'm putting it, I'm trying to get most of it on the right side of my knife to, to a certain extent. And I'm always cleaning my knife off. Man, if, if there's mud on that knife, it, it just won't turn out very good. So I'll put that mud on there and then I'm going to run it into that angle there. And this angle's still a little bit wet, and it's kind of critical. Now I come back to this side here, and I'm just not putting very much pressure on there. But I want to clean it up, and then I'm feathering the outside edge. And then my final, I am going to be looking I'm looking at this edge of my knife right here. I'm not looking anywhere else. I'm looking at this edge right against this wall because that's the critical part. So I come up here like this. I want to do that one more time. Now, normally I can get by with one stroke. Now, if there's a little bit, you can come by here and pull it off. And if there's a little edge here, there again, I'm feathering it. I'm putting pressure on this side of the knife, basically none on that side. And there's a little bit of an edge there. And I'll come across here like this, and I'll feather that off. Now there's absolutely no edge. Now the reason I said it's critical is because you can tear up the opposite side. And if you don't do this kind of fast, and when I say fast, is once you put that mud on there, the mud is wet. This mud is dry. This wet mud will cause this dry mud to get wet if you leave it on there too long. So you've got about a minute or so, maybe a minute and a half. Now if you're learning how to do angles and stuff, typically a person will do this and do this and it doesn't turn out right and they keep playing with it. Now this side is wet too. And now there's no way to make it look right. There's just no way, because now this side is wet too. Um, but that's normal for beginners. you got to get it just like I did in a couple swoops. Now, when you're going through, I told you before, I really don't sand. So I'm going through and I'm looking for things that need to be fixed. This is the final coat. It's already done. I can come by here like this and scrape the edge off. And there's just a little edge there. And I'll come through here just like I'm spotting nails. And that's done. If I've got an edge up here, I look at that. And I do it like I'm spotting a nail. And that's done. If there's any hard edges between here and there, there again. It's like I'm spotting the nails. That's done. There's no sanding necessary. Uh, there again, your nails, if you need to spot them again, go, go do it. Get the technique of going not one at a time, but, but the whole thing. You can have to play with it, but get the technique down, because if you don't get it, you know, ten years down the road, you'll still be spotting nails one at a time. And if you play with it and experiment and start doing it, like this, after a while, you'll be really fast at it, and you'll be glad you did. But if you never experiment, you're never going to learn the technique down. Here again, I'm coming through and I'm scraping. And rather than sanding, I'm just going to touch that up. Now, I want to tell you one last thing. This is the final coat. It's, it's done. Uh, I'm not going to sand it. 
Um, but even if you did set it, that's okay. Now you've heard people tell you you need to prime the walls before you paint. And that's true. There's, it's called PVA primer, drywall primer. There's all kinds of different products out there. And you do need to prime new sheet rock like this. But the trick that most people don't understand is if you're coming in here with a big commercial drywall company and you're going to spray texture on here. And if it's a fine texture, which they call orange peel, they call it orange peel because it looks like an orange peel. Um, and that's sprayed on there and that's kind of fine. You need to, you, you don't need to, but you should prime your walls before they come in and spray the walls and before they put the brocade on the ceilings and stuff like that. The reason is, is they'll come in here and spray that texture on there. Unless it's a super heavy texture, it's going to collect differently on this as versus here. Uh, if you sand it, the hairs on the paper will start sticking out all over the place. If you were to take a microscope and look at that, they'd be sticking out. And when they're spraying the texture all over the walls, there's a lot of wet dust in the air. And it'll collect on those little hairs differently than it will on here. And so when it's all done, you come through, you prime it with your PVA primer. Then you come through and you paint it and you roll it on and you do a really good job. And when you get done, you look at it in the right sunlight, it looks like hell. You can see where your nail holes are, you can see where your joints are. And there's almost no way to fix it other than putting more coats of paint on it maybe or respraying the texture or whatever. It, there's, there's really no way to fix it. It's called photographing. That's the phenomenon that they have called it. The only way to really fix that is you can spray it on or roll it on. Either way, even if you spray it on, you gotta use a back roller, a paint roller, and, and roll it on before you spray the texture or before you paint. And if you do that, you're gonna turn out almost a flawless job. When, you, when I say almost, it, you know, you're gonna find little imperfections here and there. But that's pretty much the way you're gonna do it. Um, again, you can sand if you want, I particularly do not. The next video clip you'll see is the finished product. I'm not going to spray texture on this job. Actually, I'm going to recoat everything on this wall, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm putting what they call like a Spanish texture or a Venetian plaster kind of a, a, a job on it, and, and I'll show you that later. But everything is going to be covered with a uh, trowel and with little lap marks so it looks like the old world uh, European Venetian plaster kind of thing. That's what I'm going to do. So anyway, that's